Okay, great. So I'm going to just want to make sure Ruchi's here. Ruchi, before I introduce you, are you here? I'm here. Okay, there's beautiful Ruchi. Okay, so I'd like to introduce Ruchi. Ruchi Koval is the co-founder and associate director of Congregation JFX, an innovative cure of community in Cleveland, Ohio. She has been a Jewish educator for two decades, leading self-development muster groups for adults and teens and mentoring educators around the world. Ruchi is a certified parenting coach, motivational speaker, musician, author, and mother. She's a trip leader for Momentum, inspiring hundreds of women on their journeys in Israel. She's also the author of two books, Conversations with God and Soul Construction. Find Ruchi on Instagram, on her blog, and out of the orthodoxbox.com, on Meaningful Minute, and via her podcasts. Download her Ruchi Koval app to listen to many of her lectures online or join a Zoom class yourself. <laughs> so with that, I feel very, very pri privileged to have Ruchi. Thank you, Ruchi. Thanks so much for coming on. We so appreciate you doing this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Naomi. Thank you so much to all of you, Nashim Sidkanios, for being here. I used to be a very active and regular part of this group. Unfortunately, my schedule changed and it's not that easy for me to join these days, but I miss it very much. It was a very special part of my life when I could start out my day just singing and davening and connecting with amazing women. Um, so today I want to talk about Geula of the heart. As we know, Pesach is coming. If you're a Jewish mother and you don't know that, then <laughs> I'm not sure what you're doing. Um, but it's, you know, we start getting ready for Pesach, many people well in advance. And really the real work of Pesach, as we know, is not about what our house looks like, but rather the Geula of the heart. And it's, you know, the Musser masters teach about the cleaning out of the chametz and the Saor Shebe Isa, that chametz represents the yeast in the bread within our own heart, that Yetzir Hara, that puffs us up, and that makes us full of ourselves, and that makes it difficult for us to connect to our real purpose and to connect to Hashem. So I'd like to talk about Geula of the heart, and what does that mean? So I'll start out with a philosophical point. If a person is free, but they don't know that they're free, then are they really free? So when B'nai Israel came out of Mitzrayim, it was very important that Hashem tell them, this is what's going to happen, and tomorrow you're leaving, and the whole time, as soon as Moshe Rabbeinu showed up, and he said, Pakod Pakadati, Hashem remembered you, I'm taking you out of Mitzrayim, you're going to be free, you're going to get the Torah, you're going to go into the land of Eretz Yisrael. It was very clear from the beginning that there was a plan, that there was a purpose, that they were going out of Mitzrayim for a reason, not just to be free so they didn't have to work hard anymore. You may have noticed that Judaism requires a considerable amount of effort. The point was to come out of Mitzrayim in order to be Hashem's special and holy nation. And everybody knew this is the day that we're coming out of Mitzrayim. It's going to be in the spring. It's going to be on this exact day. We are all going out of Mitzrayim in broad daylight. Nobody can stop us. Nobody can harm us. Right? And everybody knew that, that was, that's what was going to happen. Moshe Rabbeinu told Paro that that's what was going to happen. Moshe Rabbeinu told the Jewish people that that was going to happen. Everybody knew. It was very important, so to speak, to Hashem that we not only were free, but that we knew we were free and that we knew why we were free. There's a concept in philosophy about the difference between freedom from and freedom to. Usually when people think of freedom, they think, well, I'm free from, I'm free from subjugation. I'm free from worry. I'm free from fear. But now that you're free from that thing, what are you going to do with your freedom, right? Let's say you're in a really stressful job and your workplace environment is toxic and your boss is abusive and it's terrible, right? And you're like, oh my God, I cannot wait to get out of this job. I cannot wait to have freedom from this oppressive environment, great. And finally you leave your job. Oh, thank God you're free. But now what? Now what are you gonna do with your time and with your freedom? Are you gonna do something with it? 
because freedom is not just about what you don't have to do anymore. It's also about freedom to, it's not just about freedom from now you have the freedom to do what, what are you going to fill your time with? What are you going to do instead? What are you going to do with your newfound serenity and peace of mind? So B'nai Yisrael were freed from its rayim. It wasn't just freedom from. It wasn't just freedom from paro, freedom from oppression, freedom from hard work, freedom from the Egyptians. It wasn't just about that. It was specifically freedom to. That's what the four Lushonos of Geula represent. Behot Seisi, I'm going to take you out. That's freedom from. Behit Salti, I will save you. That's freedom from. Vigaalti, I will redeem you. Geula. Geula is already about freedom too. I am freeing you for the purpose of being my holy nation. Vilakachti, I will take you to me as a nation. That's freedom too. That's the purpose of coming out. We didn't come out of Mitzrayim so that we could be free and do nothing. We came out of Mitzrayim so that we could be Hashem's special and holy nation. So that we could stand around Har Sinai and say Nasev and Nishma. So that we could go into Eretz Yisrael and be a holy and special nation. There was always an inborn purpose. And even though we are in Gullus right now, and boy, are we in Gullus. And there is so much pain in this terrible Gullus. But we still have the Ula of the heart. We are still Hashem's holy nation. We still are here for a purpose and for a reason. And we have to know it because if we don't know it, then we're not going to have any idea what to do with it. Some of you may be aware that there's a new legal holiday on the calendar called Juneteenth. What is Juneteenth? Juneteenth is June 19th and it commemorates June 19th, 1865. What was significant about June 19th, 1865? That day was weeks after the end of the Civil War. Now, the end of the Civil War effectively abolished slavery. But there were many slaves in the Deep South in Texas who didn't know that they were free. And their masters certainly didn't tell them. June 19th was the date on which the slaves in Texas realized that they were free, even though they had already been free for several weeks. Now, I don't know, whatever you think politically about June 19th, not the point. The point is how tragic is it that a person could be free and have no idea that they're free? How many Jews are free and they have no idea that they're free because they don't understand that they're Jewish? They don't understand that they're part of a special and holy nation. How many from Jews are walking around in the dark and they're going through the motions and maybe they're keeping Shabbos and maybe they're keeping Hosher, maybe they're having a Pesach Seder, but they don't understand Geula of the heart. Geula of the heart is my heart belongs to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And I have the freedom to be Hashem's precious and holy daughter, no matter what is happening to me. It is fascinating that in thousands of years of Jewish oppression and persecution and slavery and pogroms and the Holocaust and October 7th, anti-Semitism, worldwide hate, the Jews never look at themselves as victims. Isn't this fascinating? We don't consider ourselves victims. Even non-firm Jews who do not understand why they don't look at themselves as being victimized, they have a national mindset that somehow we are destined for better things. And that if we are victims in a particular time or place, it's an aberration. That's not who we really are. You know, it's fascinating when you look at the world, what's going on in the Middle East and everyone's like, oh, there's all these Palestinian refugees. What about Israeli refugees? You know why we don't call them refugees? Because we all take care of them. That's why. Because we settled them in hotels and we settled them in kibbutzim and we settled them in different communities because we are all taking care of each other. You know why we're all taking care of each other? 
Because again, even if a Jew doesn't fully understand, is not completely cognizant of why they believe this way, we are a holy, elevated nation with a unique, pivotal, holy role to play in world history. And somehow or another, deep in our visceral spiritual DNA, we understand that. We're not victims. We're not refugees. We're Hashem's holy nation. Happens to be we're in trouble right now, but we're helping each other. We're lifting each other up. Why? Why do we never let ourselves believe that we're downtrodden? We always believe that we'll come back up on the top. We always believe that we'll land on our feet. We always believe that Am Yisrael Chai. If anything, tragedy and oppression bring out the most gorgeous and magnificent parts of our nation. It's fascinating. You know what that is? That's Geula of the heart. That's the visceral belief that deep in our hearts, we are connected to something greater than ourselves. We have freedom too. Freedom to be an elevated nation, freedom to be a spiritual nation, freedom to be a holy nation. And nobody, no matter what they do and no matter what they say, can take that identity away from us because we belong to Hashem. And that was born on Pesach. That's the Ula of the heart. Maybe our bodies are oppressed, but our souls are redeemed. We brought in a guest speaker once here in Cleveland in our community at JFX, Rabbi Yosef Mendelovich. I don't know how many of you heard of him. He was a Ukrainian refusenik, and he and his friends became famous for trying to hijack a plane to get to Eretz Yisrael. And for that crime, he was put in solitary confinement in the Soviet Gulag. And he described his unbelievable experiences. Fascinating how not for one second did he consider himself a victim. And while the Soviets could take everything away from him physically, he was in a hunger strike, he was in solitary confinement, he had nothing in his head and in his heart. He would review the words of Torah and connect. He didn't even know any Torah at that time. Now he's a rabbi living in Israel. He once saw a postcard of somebody lighting Shabbos candles. That was his sole connection to his identity to Judaism and to the land of Israel. He was the most oppressed human being that a human being could possibly be in his body. And he was the freest human being that a human being could possibly be in his heart. That's what Gula of the heart means. You know, it says in Pirkei Avos, in Pere Gimel, Mishnah Yodalid, chapter three, Mishnah 14. It says that, Hashem loves B'nai Israel so much and Hashem created all of the Jewish people. Well, it says Hashem created all human beings in the image of Hashem. And he even showed an extra love for us humans by letting us know that we were created in the image of Hashem. Hashem loves the Jewish. This is the second message. Hashem loves the Jewish people and he made us his Am Segula, his treasured nation. But what an extra special dosage of love that Hashem let us know that we are his Am Segula. And finally, Hashem loves us so much that he gave us the Torah. It's called in this Mishnah, a Kli Chemda, a treasured utensil or vessel. But Hashem loves us so much, an extra dosage of love that he let us know that he gave us the Torah. So interesting. Remember what we started with. If you're free and you don't know that you're free, then are you really free? Hashem created every human being in the image of God. And even if Hashem would have never let us know that we are created in the image of God, even if we would be human beings roaming around this earth and we wouldn't know, we wouldn't know that we have a godly spirit. We wouldn't know that there's something elevating inside of us. We would still be elevated and elevated species simply by virtue of the fact that Hashem created us in his image. But that wasn't enough for Hashem, so to speak. Hashem wanted to make sure we knew it. It's not enough to be special. Hashem wants you to know that you're special. So Hashem said in the beginning of the Torah in Bereshis, let us make man in our image, in our form. Hashem gave us that Torah. Hashem wanted us to know I don't just want you to be created in the image of God. I want you to know 
that you're created in the image of God. I want you to walk Uh, around this world uh, with the elevated awareness that you have a godly soul within you, that you can replicate and imitate the divine. I want you to know that, says Hashem. I don't ever want you to forget it. Never think that you're useless, that you're worthless, that you're hopeless. You are a human being and you are worthy of dignity and respect merely by virtue of the fact that you are created in the image of God. The second one is that Hashem made B'nai Israel his Amsugula, his treasured nation. But it wasn't enough that Hashem made us his treasured nation. It wasn't enough that Hashem chose us and gave us the Torah and said, I want you to be a light unto the nations. I want you to be the leaders and teachers of humanity. No, Hashem wanted to make sure we knew it. You're free, and I want you to know that you're free. So Hashem told us, I want you to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. I want you to be my treasured people, right? It's not enough to love your child. You have to let your child know that you love your child. That's what Hashem is teaching us. It's not enough to be free. I want you to know that you're free. It's not enough that you're chosen. I want you to know that you're chosen. It's not enough to be godly. I want you to know that you're godly. It's not enough that I gave you the Torah. I want you to understand how valuable and precious the Torah is. So this is such a lesson in the way we relate to other people as well. Tell people what they mean to you. Let them know how special they are to you. Tell them how much value they have and what they're worth. It's a chiba yesera. That's what Perkei says. An extra dosage of love that Hashem made sure we knew how valuable and elevated and beautiful and special we are. And maybe that's why even the most disconnected or disenfranchised Jew often understands somewhere deep within their soul where perhaps they don't even know how to access. I'm a Jew and a Jew is different and a Jew is special. A Jew is elevated. A Jew is holy. A Jew is royal. A Jew is unique. A Jew is different. A Jew has a different role to play. A Jew can never stay down for long. A Jew is never a victim. A Jew does not just have freedom from, but freedom to. It's not just about what I don't have to do anymore. It's about what I get to do with the void that that freedom has created. And this is why so many Jews, even the most disconnected Jews, are such achievers and accomplishers because there is something inside us that is propelling us towards greatness because we are Hashem's treasured nation. We were taken out of Mitzrayim for Geula to be Hashem's holy nation, to be leaders and teachers of humanity. And if a Jew does not have access to Torah, he will often become a leader and a teacher in some other area, in medicine, in art, in education, in politics, in business, in law, even in entertainment, because there's something inside the Jewish soul that is understanding that it is destined for greatness and that it will never be defined by its by its oppression. And it will never be defined by its persecution. It will never be defined by its weakest moments. And it will never be defined by tragedy. Those who define Judaism by tragedy make a terrible, grievous mistake. We are not defined by the bad things that happen to us. We are defined by how we respond to the bad things that happen to us. And if you look at the Jewish people and you look at our history over the years, you are flabbergasted by how the Jewish people has responded to tragedy. It's unprecedented. It's not possible to quantify the magnitude of the miracle that we still exist. It doesn't make an ounce of sense It absolutely breaks every single historical and national trend in history. We make no sense. And the reason we make no sense is because we are supernatural. There's nothing about us that's natural. There's nothing about us that makes sense because we are attached to Hashem and Hashem is eternal. And therefore, because Hashem is eternal, we are eternal. And we will never not exist, no matter what is going on around us. That's freedom too. 
freedom to be magnificent, freedom to be amazing. And there are non-Jewish scholars who have noted this trend. This is a short essay from Mark Twain, written in the 1800s. It was printed on in 1897. If the statistics are right, the Jews constitute but one quarter of 1% of the human race. It suggests a nebulous puff of stardust lost in the blaze of the Milky Way. Properly, the Jew ought hardly to be heard of, but he is heard of, has always been heard of. He is as prominent on the planet as any other people, and his importance is extravagantly out of proportion to the smallness of his bulk. His contributions to the world's list of great names in literature, science, art, music, finance, medicine, and abstruse learning are also very out of proportion to the weakness of his numbers. He has made a marvelous fight in this world in all ages and has done it with his hands tied behind him. He could be vain of himself and be excused for it. The Egyptians, the Babylonians, and the Persians rose, filled the planet with sound and splendor, then faded to dream stuff and passed away. The Greeks and Romans followed and made a vast noise and they were gone. Other people have sprung up and held their torch high for a time, but it burned out and they sit in twilight now and have vanished. The Jew saw them all, survived them all, and is now what he always was, exhibiting no decadence, no infirmities of age, no weakening of his parts, no slowing of his energies, no dulling of his alert but aggressive mind. All things are mortal but the Jews. All other forces pass, but he remains. What is the secret of his immortality? I'll tell you what's the secret of his immortality. The Ula of the heart. It's because deep in our Nishamas, we understand that we are destined for greatness and that we will continue. And Hashem made us a promise that we will never not exist because Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim for a reason and for a purpose. And that is to affect positive change in this world. As I said, we are in a terrible gullus right now, as you all know. We are in a national state of gullus in the war in Eretz Yisrael. And there are unfortunately no shortage of personal gullios and tragedies going on in our private lives. But everything happens for a reason, right? And Hashem runs the world. Naomi, tell me what our, our uh, schedule is. Should I, do I have a few more minutes or do you want me yeah, to- Yeah, of course you have a few more minutes. Go ahead, of course. Okay. So how can a person really take these ideas of Geula of the heart, this, this greatness, this freedom to, this idea that Hashem loves us so much, he wants us to know that we're free. He wants us to know that we're destined for greatness. But how do we square this with all of the difficult, painful experiences, sometimes very private, you know, difficulties, challenges, nisionos that people are going through? How can we feel Geula of the heart when so much of our lives is still trapped in Gullus? Pesach is coming, and for many people, Pesach will be a difficult yantif. Sometimes people are very lonely on yantif. Sometimes there are people that you used to spend yantif with that are no longer in your life, or that no longer want to spend yantif with you. People have financial issues that make yantif difficult and painful. There's so many reasons. How do we really harness this mindset? of Geula of the heart as we go into Yantif. So there's a muster safer that was written 500 years ago. It's called Orchos Tzadik and the Ways of the Righteous. It's of anonymous authorship. The author was working on his Anivas, humility, and did not want to publicize the name who wrote the book, who wrote the safer. And the book is translated, uh, sorry, is divided into 28 midos, 28 character traits. And one of the character traits that's discussed is called Shar HaSimcha, the gate of joy. Now, it's fascinating when the author discusses joy, the author discusses many different aspects of joy, but a big part of the chapter is devoted to the fact that joy can only be experienced through bitachon. Why? Because bad things happen to good people, as you may have noticed. 
And of course, we believe that Hashem has a plan. But you know what? Sometimes it's really hard to have joy when bad things are happening, when difficult and painful things are happening. What is the recipe for simcha in the face of challenge? Or put another way, how can we experience geula of the heart when we are very much in galus? The answer is bitachal. And the author goes through a very deep dive into what bitachon means. Bitachon means that you trust, that you behave with trust, that Hashem runs the world, that you are not God, and that everything happens for a reason, and that the bad things that happen to your life are not actually bad. They may be sad, but they're not bad. Why? Because if Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim to save us for a reason, not just freedom from, freedom to, freedom to be amazing, freedom to be great, freedom to be leaders, freedom to be a light unto the nations, right? Then it can't be that Hashem is giving us painful experiences randomly for no reason. It must be that the difficult experiences and every person has something some painful piece of their lives, nobody is spared because Adam la Amal Yulad, we are here in this world to work. We are here to work on ourselves to become amazing people. We are here to experience Gaula of the heart. We are here to free our hearts of those constraints that prevent us from becoming connected to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Right? Then we have to work on our bitachon to truly get to that mindset. So that what? So that we can be happy no matter what is happening to us. So that we can be happy no matter what is happening to us. And yes, that is possible. Geula of the heart means that your heart is free to be besimcha no matter what is happening to you. That's what it means. And I understand that that might seem impossible, but I'm here to tell you that that is not impossible. Geula of the heart means your heart is free even if your body is broken. That's what it means. And that's possible. I'm telling you that it's possible because I have done it myself. I'm not going to say I do it perfectly. I don't. I'm not going to say I do it consistently. I don't. But I have done it. I have found the power of your heart overpowering your body. I have found it possible for your inner, inner simcha to overwhelm your outer tragedy. It can be done and it must be done. You can have serenity and joy and connection to Hashem no matter what your personal circumstances are. Every day in davening, when we daven for Geula, we say, Hashem, I hope every day for your Yeshua, right? And it's in the it's in the paragraph that talks about Mashiach and David Hamalak and Hashem, you know, bringing Mashiach and everything. That's great. But you know what it also means? It means every day I believe in your Yeshua, Hashem, not just our national Yeshua. But my personal Yeshua, what is that Yeshua that I need so badly, that I'm hoping for, that I'm davening for, that I need so much my stomach hurts because I don't have it yet? Ki lishu asacha ki vinu kol hayom. Kol hayom doesn't just mean every day. It means all day. All day, Hashem. Ki vinu, we hope for your Yeshua. That means that all day I can have hope. That's freedom to. I have the freedom to be connected to Hashem, no matter what is happening to me. I want to read you a little something that I wrote, and I, I want to tell you about a reaction that I got to it, and then I'll close. So I have a WhatsApp channel um, that I put out my writings and my videos and my stuff like that. If you want to get on it, you can ask Naomi how to get in touch with me. And I wrote the following and I posted it on my WhatsApp channel. 
Your children cannot be the, your source of satisfaction in life. You have to raise them. You have to nurture them. You love them. You listen to them. You guide them. You role model to them. You help them. You teach them. Then you sit back and let them figure it out. But if you want to be a happy human, your personal satisfaction cannot be dependent on the quality of their choices. Your personal satisfaction can only be dependent on the quality of your choices. That's it. That's what I wrote. Do you understand that what I just described is freedom? It's freedom from defining yourself by what happens to you. And it's freedom to be happy and connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu no matter what happens to you. Now, I got some very interesting reactions to this. And one woman reached out to me. She said, Ruchi, how can you possibly be happy if your kids are suffering? <laughs> So like, this is not a WhatsApp conversation. So we're going out for coffee after Pesach. Suffice it to say that you can. Because you are a Jew. And you have an elevated heart. And Hashem took you out of Mitzrayim to be great. So maybe you can take yourself out of Mitzrayim. Maybe you can let your heart be free instead of being imprisoned. Maybe you're already free and you don't even know it. So you have to remember that you're free. And you have to remember that your heart has the power to sing no matter what is going on around you. And this is true personally. And this is true nationally. And perhaps this is the greatest work of Pesach to understand that you are not defined by what happens to you, you are defined by how you respond to what happens to you. And I want to give all of you beautiful Nashim Tzidkaniyos a bracha as we go into the season of Pesach and as we go into the season of the Ula. May you be free to soar. And may you know that you're free. May you have the freedom to access bitachon, and therefore, simcha, no matter what is happening around you. And may you have the schus to therefore be a role model to others in your simcha, in your geula, in your freedom, and in your true connection to Hashem, no matter what's going on around you. Thank you so much, Naomi, Amen. for having us and for hosting this and for making this possible and for inviting me to, to be here today. Amazing. That was that was that Thank was amazing. You. Yeah, that was amazing, Rochi. You know, I want to mention to you. Awesome. Um, you know, it's interesting. You say you talked about um, the um, you talked about the elevation of being part of the Jewish nation and that we're not victims. And what's very very interesting is um, is um, I think that October 7th, we, we didn't live through the Holocaust, but I think that October 7th showed that more than anything, right? It, 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 we, it, Hashem, not only did he isolate us, but he also showed us that we are different in, in, in so many different ways. Like if you look at the way the nations of the world are reacting and our cousins, you see, you see violence and, and, and hate and anger and lies and sheker and tuma. And you look at the Jews, what do you see? Chesed, love, kindness, staka, togetherness. Yeah, it's not perfect. It's not, right? It's never going to be perfect, but that's what you see. And I have to tell you, I, I was in a cab yesterday in Tel Aviv. I go to Tel Aviv a lot because I have children there. And um, we were in this cab and he was like tattooed all over his arms, you know, which is very, very um, prevalent in Tel Aviv. <laughs> and um, he started talking to us. He told us he just got out of Gaza. He was there for four months and that um, and he's devastated. He doesn't know how to even in his head over what he saw and he has a friend who sits and takes pills all day because he can't live 
because his son is a hostage and he has another friend who lost a son. And through this whole thing we're talking, he's saying, you know, has made a living in four months. You know, there's so many layers to this tragedy, uh -huh. this trauma that Ami Sorrell is facing here. But through this all, all of a sudden, he turned to me and my daughter and he said, look, right? He picked up a shirt, look at my tzitzis. And he opened his, his front part of his, of, his, of his car and he said, look at my tefillin. And then he pulled out his tefillin book. He said, look at my tefillin, right? He says, every morning, no keep on nothing, totally secular. Every morning, he says, I go out and I take my tefillin and my tefillin and my sitter and I go down into a Kodesh Baruch that he should help us and he should save us and he should protect our soldiers and he should bring our hostages home and he should create love and unity in Am Yisrael. So you're right. That, this is a perfect example of exactly mm -hmm. what you were describing, yeah. right? That wow. every Jew, no matter what, knows deep down somewhere in that neshama that there is a higher purpose and that we have an higher purpose. And um, it's just, uh, you know, it's a little bit difficult now to grab on to um, going beyond the, the level of tragedy that we are, you know, that we as a nation are facing. Yeah. And um, you know, it's, uh, the amount of tragedy and, and I got to tell you, you know, like how isolated we are again, how betrayed, mm -hmm. you know, you, you talk about how we, we go and we pick ourselves up and we build, but we go and we build for the nations of the world who hate us. We've done mm -hmm. that again. And now we're being told that we don't belong. And Baruch Hashem, we have Eretz Yisrael because I can't even imagine if we didn't have an army and we didn't have what we have here in Eretz Yisrael, that is the defenders really of Am Yisrael, really the defenders of civilization, to be really honest. Yeah. So, and I just want to mention one more thing, you know, in terms of the Palestinians being refugees, you know, we were kicked out of all the Arab lands. We were really kicked out of Europe. We're, we're, we're real refugees. Right? We're, we're, we're the epitome of refugees. There is no country, there is no people in the world that have remained refugees. You know, uh, Bella Hadid, Gigi Hadid, models are considered Palestinian refugees. They were the only people that had been given this, this sort of right. And it's exactly what we said. First of all, it's because of the hate of the Jew. That's, you know, it's, it's evident, right? You have to find another way to, you know, to delegitimize and dehumanize the Jew as it's happening today. And also because um, the concept that Eretz is, you know, we know more than ever Eretz Yisrael is our land. We have to believe it. Just like we have to believe Guru in our hearts and who we are. We have to believe that Eretz Yisrael was given to us. We have to believe that Shem wants us to have it. We have to fight for it. You know, not believe that we need to give it away or we have to acquiesce to the nations of the world or we have to sacrifice our own people, you know, because we have to, you know, feeling Gula in the heart is, is, is very, very deep. You know, it goes really deep and on every single level. And um, so, but yeah, <laughs> we got to reach real deep today. Real deep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Uh, set. You know, I have and, one and question. I, if oh, go ahead, Esty. Go ahead, Esty. No, it's just, just it's not. Yours was beautiful. What you said. Well, both of you, incredible. You really uplifted. Really incredible. You're already giving us a flying mindset. Just a question. We know that we're in the image of Hashem. All those things you said, and a hundred percent. We're Am Hanifchar and we have a special task. But aren't the non-Jewish people also in the image of Hashem? That's not different than us. It's just that we have a different task. We're chosen on a different, right? Is that because they're also in the image of Hashem? So in a way, 
Hashem has also given them a gift to understand right. who they well, should and, be and what their job should be. Right? I'm just clarifying it, right? No, no, because, 100%, no? 100% Esty. And, and I, I'll tell you something. A anybody who wants God, a you know, someone who really wants God in the most holistic way gets to, gets to Hashem. Right. Right? 100%. But, but we but are I the guess... only one that Hashem gave us an Hashem. We are the only one. No, 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 Judith. No, Judith, we have actually, we have an Hashem, the Jewish people have an Hashem made from what we, from the heavens. The non-Jews have an Hashem made from the earth. And that's why when someone's becoming the Geyer and they've done the whole thing, they're like, they feel a Jew, they act, they know, but until they're proper, the end, the end, end step, they have to open, they have to not keep, they cannot keep Shabbos. And it hurts them. Yeah, but I, they I think also keep, they don't have, I think, Esty, they don't have the five levels of the soul. I think oh, their okay. soul so, is just I know, but level it, it, it is a difference, but they I have think it's a just, soul. It's, it's the nefesh right. soul. It's not, I it doesn't well, go up um, to Yechida, Chaya and Yechida. I just want to go up to the five Herte levels. Avos because that's the one that I quoted, and hopefully this will clarify a little bit. So it does describe two levels. One is all of humanity, and one is the Jewish people. So the beginning of Pirkei Avos, again, this is 314. Chaviv Adam Shenivra B'Tselem. Beloved is mankind, for he was created in the image of Hashem. Especially beloved is he, for it was made known to him that he had been created in the, in the image of Hashem. So this is every single human being, Jew and non-Jew alike, was created in the image of Hashem and is beloved by Hashem. Okay, here's part two. This is just the Jewish people. Beloved are Israel in that they were called the children of Hashem. Especially beloved are they, for it was made known to them they are, that they are the children of Hashem. So all of humanity is beloved in Hashem and is created in the image of Hashem. Hashem has an extra love for the Jewish people because we are his children. Well, because we chose the Torah. That's why. Ruchi, because we chose, we chose to follow the Torah. Right. Right. That's that's the reason. That's that that's what makes it. And if you look at the morality of the Jew generally, right, if you look at the difference, it the Torah is actually it's our savior. Because if you look at the Jew who who really truly from the deepest level follows the Torah on an Ashama level, on a heart level, it totally separates us from everybody else because we have a level of morality that is just not seen anywhere else, right? But that's only when a Jew has the Torah, really. I'm not saying that when a Jew doesn't have the Torah, they don't have levels of morality, but it's not the same levels of morality, right? A Jew who has Torah is always looking out to elevate, right? Because all they're ever thinking about is Malchus Hashem. So a, a Jew who is, who is connected to Torah so Torah is really our, is, is our savior, because when you're connected to Torah, you, you work on your speech, you, you work on your chesed, you work on your tzedakah, you work on your kindness, you work on your love. You're not just doing it randomly, you're doing it to elevate, right, for a greater purpose. So it's not, you, you, know, you don't have misconstrued compassion or misdirected compassion. Your compassion doesn't go, my body my body, my choice, right? Your compassion is holy compassion. It doesn't get, it doesn't get misconstrued. So I think that our, our, what, what separates us is the fact that we, we, were, we are beloved, we were given this Torah. When we, we elevate and we use the Torah as our, as our, our, our river, our lake, our ocean, our song, right? When we use it to imbue ourselves in every part of our life, then everything gets elevated, including our marriages, our children, everything, right? Anyways, what do you say? What do you say, Rufi? Rufi? Yeah, beautifully said. Thank you. Rivka Olgan wants to ask you a question. Go ahead, Rivka. No, I just want to wave. Hi, Rivki. <laughs> <laughs> I was running late for work today and I was like, okay, it's so bad shed because I like was able, but now I got to go back to work. So I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> Are you working on the bridge? <laughs> no, that's my back. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> All right. I, I got to run, Naomi, but thank you so much. Okay, us too. Me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rafi. Take thank care. you. Bye. May Hashem continue to give you the Thank strength you. to do all the beautiful things you do. Amen. And the same for you. Amen. For all of Amisra. Thank you, Ruchi. Okay, everyone. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Ruchi. Say hello to Cleveland. <laughs>